Best friend betrayed me, his wife cheated on him, and now my wife is supporting the cheater, causing a rift in our marriage that may be irreparable. My marriage with my wife, Mary, 31F, feels like it's unraveling at the seams. I just have so much anger, disgust and resentment inside me to the point that regular everyday living feels impossible. I want to scream all the time and it feels like I'll never be my carefree self again. Yes, I'm in therapy and have told my wife I really think we need couple slash marriage counseling too, she's thinking about it. This is long, so if you can be bothered to read it, buckle in. TLDR below. My best friend, Ben, was my ride or die. We met when we were five and were inseparable since then. We were there for each other during all of life's big moments and turns. His place turned into my second home when my parents went through their explosive divorce when I was 11. I was there for him and mourned with him when his younger sister died of cancer when we were 15 and she was only 10. You name it, we worked through it. He was the only one to not freak out on me when I decided to drop out of college to pursue a trade. There was never a moment where either of us were worried about the other's reaction, or what they'd say or think. Ben was the type of guy people knew could make anyone feel better, regardless of the situation. He always knew what to say and what you needed, even if you didn't agree at the time. He's the best person I've ever had the privilege of meeting and the world was a better place with him in it. I unfortunately know I have to put this in here, no, Ben and I were never in love with each other like that. We were really close best friends slash brothers, Ben met his wife, Sally, in his junior year of college and I knew Sally was going to be the greatest love of his life. She was so open, warm and adventurous. Like Ben, she had a smile that lit up the whole room and effortlessly made everyone feel like her best friend. Every, one, including myself, looked at them as that perfect couple everyone knows. They got married two years into dating. Ben always told me how excited he was to love, hold and protect her forever. All the ways he wanted to make her happy. He showed his love for her every day in his words and actions. I was so happy for him, because I thought she did the same. I helped her plan his surprise 30th birthday party, where he was reduced to tears upon seeing she spent hours making him a Mario Kart Rainbow Road themed cake. They talked about children, holidays, rescuing animals, growing their own fruits and vegetables. Sally quickly became a sister to me and became very close friends with Mary. The four of us went on countless holidays, helped each other through life's challenges, went on at least one double date a fortnight, etc. About five months ago, I woke up to five missed calls from Ben between the hours of 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. the night before and I just had a feeling something really bad had happened. I called out of work and drove straight to his place. Sally had been cheating on Ben pretty much their entire relationship. When I confronted her and asked how she could do such a thing, and why get married in the first place if you're going to cheat the entire time, she broke down and told me it was more like living a double life. Sally was slash as gay. She'd known since she was a teenager but never felt like she could come out because of conservative family. She met Ben and fell in love with him, and counted on her feelings for women just somehow going away. She said she genuinely loved him as a person and life partner, but that secret part of her only grew stronger and louder over the years. She casually dated and hooked up with women, telling Ben she was hanging out with friends from her hobbies slash friend groups. He only found out the night he'd called me because one of the women Sally was seeing wanted to take their relationship further and freaked out when Sally broke up with H. Her instead. This woman showed up to their house late at night and told Ben everything. Ben was absolutely shattered. He gave everything to Sally and loved her wholeheartedly and it wasn't even with a real her. She claimed to love him, but I can't help but think she was using him. She lied to everyone, let us think she loved and adored Ben as much as he loved her. Also that she could have her cake and eat it too. I was quick to tell Ben he deserved better, but Sally apparently begged on her hands and knees. Told him she really did love him, and that she was willing to do anything to make it better. She would never talk to any women ever again, they could move somewhere new and start fresh, all that bullcrap. Ben fell into a deep depression because he realized he never knew the real Sally, but he did really love her. He agonized over what to do until he got hit by a drunk driver while out on a late night walk two months ago. I won't go into how it felt to lose him, I'm sure you can all imagine. It was made worse by having that bitch crying at his funeral, crying like he really was the love of his life and she was the perfect wife. It was the first time in my life I ever wanted to hit someone. I couldn't believe the audacity she had to show her face around Ben's loved ones, especially the ones that knew the truth. Mary knows how I feel about Sally and I thought she understood that Sally is dead to us. I know I can't dictate who a person should slash can be friends with, but if I had a mutual friend with Mary that shattered her as much as Sally did to me, I'd cut them off with no question. I can't be friends with someone who hurts my loved ones like that. About two weeks ago, I came home from a work trip early and Mary was consoling Sally in our living room. I lost my shit. Asked them if they were having an affair, screamed to the point of crying. I asked Mary how she could have Sally in the living room where we have a photo of Ben hanging on the wall. Sally tried, to apologize to me and here's where I was probably ta. I looked at her crying face and it was like a switch flipped in me. I immediately stopped crying and yelling and I just looked at her and said, the biggest injustice here is that you're here while Ben is in the ground. If the world were fair, I'd be able to press a button to swap your places and I'd do that in a heartbeat. You might be able to trick my wife into feeling sorry for you but you're dead to me. I see what you really are in your trash. 
You tricked Ben into falling in love with you so you could pretend to be mommy and daddy's good little straight girl while fucking whoever you wanted on the side. I can't even fathom or quantify your selfishness. If I woke up tomorrow and I was you, I'd never get out of bed every again. Mary says I was cruel, and I guess I was, but it was my truth. Apparently, Sally hasn't left her house since that confrontation. It's to the point she's lost her job because of not going into the office. The thing is, I don't feel bad about it. I think it's the least she could do and I hope she continues to not exist in my world. Mary knows I feel this way, but still goes to Sally's place to bring her meals and help clean up the place. It honestly disgusts me. We've had many explosive arguments about it, and for the first time in our marriage, I feel like we might not recover from this. We both feel like we've seen a new side to each other and we don't know if we'll be able to move past it. I write this here because we've kept this situation to ourselves. Other people in our lives know something is up, but have been too afraid to ask. I guess I want other people's opinions on my thoughts and feelings on this matter, even if everyone thinks I'm the asshole. Update 1. On to the update, it's only been a week but it's felt like forever. Mary couldn't handle the fights and disagreements anymore and packed her bags the day after my post. I knew this was probably for the best and did, and have it in me to argue or fight for her to stay. I just asked, are you going to Sally? To which she just sighed and shook her head at me before leaving. Her eyes had nothing but exhaustion and disdain inside and to be fair, I'm sure mine were the same. The town I live in isn't that big, so I've had a few friends reach out to me that they saw Mary at Sally's place, or that the two were seen grocery shopping together. I wake up every day to an empty house, knowing Mary is at Sally's. Looking after her. Asking if she's okay. Cooking her meals. Cleaning her house. She hasn't called or texted me at all, other than to answer my call last night with, I'm not going to talk to you until you apologize to Sally. And hanging up when I try to explain myself. I know I'd be lying if I said I felt bad for what I said to Sally at all. There's no point in hollow apologies and I especially don't think there's a point if there's nothing left to fix in my marriage. Mary has made it clear where her loyalties and priorities lie. I just don't understand how she can go from holding me while I cried in her arms to choosing Sally over me and ignoring me. My therapist is advising me to let myself just feel my feelings and process before making any big life choices, and she's probably right, but I've lost all respect for Mary. I never would have thought she'd betray me this way. I lied awake last night when I suddenly had the thought, what if Mary came back on her hands and knees, begging and apologizing? What if she gave me the best apology she could possibly give me for this situation? What would it change? It breaks my heart but deep down, I feel like it wouldn't change anything. There's some things that can't be forgiven. There were a few comments and DMs asking if Mary and Sally could be having an affair, or if Mary knew about Sally before everything exploded. These questions did keep me up when all of this started going down, but now I can't bring myself to care. My life dough, essent make any more, so another clusterfuck detail wouldn't really change much in the grand scheme of things. I've drafted a text that could be the last text I sent to Mary and it goes as follows, Mary. Your priorities and loyalties in this situation have been made very clear to me. I don't know if you want to try to save our marriage and the life we've built together, but at this point, I don't think there's anything left of it to save. You abandoned me during what I can only hope is the worst time of my life. You've invalidated my grief and anger for what? The woman who's been lying to and betraying us for years? The woman who used and strung Ben along for years? I don't recognize you right now. It's like I went to bed in a world that made sense one night and woke up in a nightmare. I think the only way forward here is for us to get lawyers and communicate through lawyers. I will not be leaving my house, if you want to collect your things, please let, relative, know so I can arrange that with them. I can't believe this is happening, I never thought this would be what we've become but choices have been made. I've been reading and redrafting this message over and over again for hours. Sometimes, it breaks my heart, and other times, it's like I'm an outsider watching myself in a bad movie. The worst thing is, I don't even know if Mary will care about it. I guess I'll let you guys know if I send it. I know this can't go forever. Update 2. I've had a few people ask in comments and DMs about what I said to Mary in our arguments to make her leave. I didn't put that in here originally because we were honestly just going in circles again and again. It was nothing short of exhausting. Mary kept on insisting that Sally is still one of her closest friends and that she's not going to abandon her because she made a mistake. To which, I'd remind her that her mistake was to make the choice again and again to lie to Ben and everyone around her, robbing Ben of the chance to find someone who would truly love him the way he deserved while sleeping with and dating women while they were married. I can't imagine how scary it must be having to hide such a big part of yourself, but not everything can or should be forgiven. She could have been honest early on and she would have had a group of friends who'd have her back and support her however they could but instead, she chose to string Ben along. If Ben had died thinking he had the perfect marriage he thought he had, things would be different, but he didn't. He died lost and in pain as a direct result of Sally, the feeling lost and in pain, I know his death was an accident nobody could have seen coming. Mary thinks and claims I'm a callous fuck and I think she should have higher moral standards for her friends. Now on to the next story. Best friend crosses boundaries, insists on hosting my baby shower and sends angry messages after being called out on her unsolicited advice. I, 22F, and my husband, 23 male, got married young, I was 18, 
He was 19. Both of us knew we always wanted to get married and start a family young. I started college two years ago, and he just graduated with a Bachelor of Biomedical Science. My husband has a girl best friend, 23F, who I'll call Sam, who he met in college, both of them grew up Baptist, and while he's left the church, they had a very similar childhood and bonded quite quickly. Despite what you may be thinking her and I got along really well. She and I liked the same music and we were both studying in relatively the same field so she became a friend of mine as well. Since I found out I was pregnant though, some issues have started to arise. We announced our pregnancy on social media after we told our parents. Sam texted my husband a congrats text and then told him to pass on her well wishes to me. She's been texting him nonstop with baby advice and what she likes to call advice for mama which includes sometimes relatively targeted jaw, BS at what I should eat. Honestly I kept brushing the texts off, but it got a point where the conversations were less about the baby and more about me which I was getting increasingly uncomfortable with because she wasn't texting me she was texting my husband. My husband acknowledged this and has just started to show them to me and ask what I want him to do. I just told him to ignore them. When I announced I was having a baby shower and sent out the invites, I received a text from Sam. She said something along the lines of wanting to host my baby shower and set it up. I told her politely that my mom was planning on hosting it with the help of my sister and that it was a special moment for them and I wouldn't want to take that away. Well Sam ignored that message, because the next day, she came over and insisted we start working out arrangements for the venue. I told her once again, my mom and sister were hosting it and she told me that she should take her advice and let her plan it because she'd ensure that the baby shower would be better if she planned it particularly because she'd be working on the menu. Whether it was pregnancy hormones or just bottled up rage, I told her that the jabs she'd been making at me behind my back about my diet during this pregnancy to my husband are really annoying and that no she cannot host this shower and from now on her unsolicited advice was not appreciated especially if she can't say it to my face. That night my husband's phone blew up with messages from Sam saying that he had no right to show her those messages and they were just supposed to just be health tips because Sam was studying nutritional science and only wanted to help her best friend and ensure a happy baby in life. Update 1. I decided not to read a lot of the messages she sent simply because I didn't care, but according to my abjin I'm eating perfectly normal things for a healthy pregnancy. I've always been on the skinnier side and through high school I was severe, Lee underweight, but when I got pregnant I needed to eat more to sustain a healthy weight, I don't know if Sam knows that, but I do know that according to my doctor I'm actually eating quite well so far. Plus are you Sam undercover? I have to ask. Look I don't know her intentions but you saying you have been and are still perhaps underweight, thanks for your unsolicited opinion on my body based on the small amount of information you have been given. I have been eating healthy, and I am now a healthy weight. As for the advice Sam was giving me, it was sound advice yes, medically I'm sure it was perfectly normal advice, I'm not arguing with that, but my issue comes from her unsolicited comments, advice that was not ever given to me under the pretenses of being a good friend. The advice was given to my husband, and apparently I was not supposed to see it. I don't know if you yourself have ever been pregnant but I'm going to assume no. Advice you don't ask for, comments on how you eat, what you eat, everyone loves to put their two cents in, but as long as my doctor says I'm healthy and I'm eating healthy, then as far as I'm concerned other people's opinions that I never asked for, can shove off. Sorry I have to post this here due to character limits, hi everyone up here, just wanted to give some more context and info and answer a lot of your burning questions. Also, thank you for all the well wishes, our baby girl is healthy and happy from what I've heard from our abjin. Okay here goes. 1. Sam is in a short term relationship, they've been dating for about 2 months and he's nice. I haven't talked to him much but from what I have gathered he treats her well. 2. I was severely underweight for most of high school. My mom was always very thin and so was I, but in high school I suffered from an ed for a while and lost a lot of weight very quickly. For the past three years I've been working with a therapist and food specialist to maintain a good diet, and that has n. I changed since pregnancy. My abjin is happy with my health and the health of the baby. Sam does not know this, only my close family, friends and husband do. I don't share that info with many people because I don't find it necessary to. 3. Sam met my husband first before I met her, husband and I had been dating for three years by then, we started dating in high school. She has never expressed interest in my husband, that I know of. 4. It was not his choice to ignore the messages, but mine. Pregnancy has given me a lot of unnecessary stress and I didn't want to add to that by causing more drama with people, so if it was his way he would have shut her down. I told him not to because Sam has always been a passionate person and I didn't think much about the messages when they first started. That has since changed. 5. What I found most weird about the situation was that I was apparently not allowed to see those messages yet they were about me and how I was eating. Some of them were sort of snarky, the worst one I saw was along the lines of criticizing me for wanting McDonald's at 3 in the morning when apparently, a Big Mac, a large fries and a large vanilla thick shake is not healthy for the baby. I did cry a little bit after reading that, and my husband did send a text message saying that I was allowed to crave stuff during my pregnancy, which she ignored. 6. Husband and I are probably going to go low contact with her for a bit. Also, he rarely hangs out with her anymore, and if he does, he invites me, but I don't always go because I'm tired. 7. Edit, it was my choice to go low contact not my husband's. 
Please stop criticizing him for this decision as it wasn't his. I'm aware this post has now become a place where many people are insinuating that Sam and my husband may have something going on, I assure you, they do not. My reasoning for going low contact and not no contact are my own and it is what I am comfortable with at this moment. Update 2. Okay so hubby and IP, honed Sam today and talked to her about the issues we were having with how she was acting. I explained that I was very uncomfortable with the fact that she had been texting my husband not me about my pregnancy and eating habits and that when she assumed she would be granted secrecy and she wasn't she got mad. Sam explained that in the moment it seemed like a good idea not to text me directly in case she overstepped and made me mad, so she was hoping that if she explained things to my husband he would be able to relay that info to me casually. She assured she just wanted to help protect and nurture the baby and to that I said that this isn't her baby. I am perfectly capable of making sure the baby is healthy. She apologized and explained that truly she only thought she was doing something good. Husband and I explained we are just going to distance ourselves a bit because this situation has mo only made me uncomfortable but husband also said that he needs to focus on his wife right now and Sam needs to take a backseat. I don't think she was overly happy with this but she said okay. She asked if she was still invited to the baby shower and hubby said it may be best that she skips it but I explained if she wants to her invitation is still valid and she is still welcome. Sam did text me after the phone call asking if we can meet for coffee so I'm seeing her tomorrow. I'll update you guys on how that goes. Honestly I think she was just misguided. She's not a bad person at heart. Update 3. Sam is out of our lives. Essentially I did go see Sam, and she was not alone, in fact she brought her cousin who is. Pause for effect. A therapist. About 5 minutes into Sam's opening monologue I left. She explained that after hubby and I told her we wanted low contact she realized that clearly the stress of expecting a baby had caused me to act irrationally and she wanted me to have someone to speak to. She even tried to dress it up by saying that yay I didn't have to pay for, this. Yippee. Anyway I left. Hubby sent her a message saying we need distance and not to contact us for a while edit. This does not mean we are going low contact, we are going no contact, as I stated she is out of our lives. Sam's a bit irrational right now and we just want to minimize fallout hence telling her for a while not to psychoanalyze but honestly I think Sam needs help. Clearly she cares, but it's too much. And honestly it's insulting how little she thinks I can look after myself and my baby. Her overbearing personality has its limits and honestly I can't take it.